Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, you know, I just have to say that I do hear constantly from the other side, from the Republican side, criticism of CMS, FDA, and all these agencies um, that, in my opinion, are really the key uh, to our success in innovation. I mean, also at the same time, efforts on the Republican side to cut back on research dollars for these agencies like the CMS and FDA. I mean, we can't rely on pharma and the private sector uh, to, you know, solely develop new drugs. I mean, they're driven by profit. They're driven by how much money they can make. And they're not, you know, sure they're worried about safety because they want to make sure that their drugs are safe, otherwise people won't buy them. But it, 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 we can't just constantly say, CMS is bad, CMS shouldn't have any money, uh, you know, and then say, okay, pharma and, and the industry is going to take care of everything. It doesn't work that way. They have to work together. And we have to be uh, monitoring both the federal uh, agencies as well as the private sector to make sure that they're well funded and that they have um, that they're conscious of safety in their effort to bring drugs to market and and, and I think that you know I, I, I don't want to constantly remind the other side but you need them to work hand in hand and not just say you know that the public sector is the, is the bad guys in any case let me just talk about um, um, the issue at hand here um, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services plays an important role in ensuring that Medicare beneficiaries can access innovative medical technologies and treatments in a timely manner. CMS does all this while maintaining appropriate safeguards that prioritize the health and well-being of our nation's seniors and the disabled. And this is particularly critical since we have seen an acceleration of scientific breakthroughs over the last few decades. We're extremely fortunate to live at a time when biomedical sciences have become so advanced and medical knowledge has progressed to allow the creation of cures and treatments to address and slow the progression of devastating diseases, including Alzheimer's. Today, nearly 6.7 million Americans are living with Alzheimer's disease, and unfortunately, that number is expected to increase by 214 million by 2060. And these numbers are sobering, and virtually no one in this country will be spared from the devastating impact of Alzheimer's. So I was pleased to see Medicare provide broad coverage of Luconamab following the FDA's decision to grant traditional approval. Medicare covers Luconamab more broadly at this point than any other payer while facilitating the collection of real-world evidence through a patient registry. And I'm hopeful the drug will live up to its promise of slowing the progression of Alzheimer's disease for patients. Because of the nature of clinical trials, the approval studies left important questions unanswered about how Medicare beneficiaries as a whole will do on this medication. Both the FDA and the, neuro and the neurology and the neurology community have cautioned about safety in certain patient groups and the potential deadly side effects the drugs can cause. And as a result, CMS is asking doctors who prescribe the drug to provide clinical data through a free registry. This registry will allow doctors and patients access to all the information they need to make the right decisions about this treatment and others like it. And I believe CMS has taken the right approach, leaving clinical decision making between patients and doctors while addressing current evidence gaps to better understand the benefits and side effects associated with the drug. And I look forward to hearing from our witnesses today about the proposed registry, as well as opportunities for improvement to ensure that it collects the right information at the right time and does not hinder beneficiary access. Now, CMS has also proposed a process for covering breakthrough devices in the Medicare program while ensuring the collection of real-world evi real evidence to fill any evidence gaps. And the collection re and review of this evidence will also allow CMS to adjust coverage decisions based on new developments. We must also recognize that treatments and cures only work when patients can afford them. Luconamab costs $26,500 per year. That's nearly the annual income of the average Medicare beneficiary. And the pharmaceutical industry must stop putting profits over patients and ensure seniors have access to effective treatments and medications that are affordable. So I thank our witnesses for being here today. I look forward to your testimony. And with that, Mr. Chairman, uh, I yield back.